Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast, where we discuss the previous weekend gaming. Maybe we go over a topic, too. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me, as always, Alex. It's starting hot today, man. I feel great. Yeah. You know, I took a hit of your Pepsi that you have here. Yeah. Uh, is there approximately a gallon of Pepsi I mean, you have sitting here? Um, it's approximately... One and a quarter li- liter? Is that what it says? Yeah. 1.25 liter. That's, yeah. that's, it's, I mean, that's insane, Alex. I mean, for a dollar, it ain't <laughs> bad. But I mean, for a dollar, you can probably much get, what is it, the, the, the normal... What is it? Two liters. Thank you. I, I had to think I, about... I don't know. Is two liter even a thing anymore? Do people buy two... Oh, you hear that? Lead? Oh. That sizzle. There's some ASMR there I, for you. You gotta get that, that little... Hold on. Oh! Get that it pop. wasn't even open yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've uh, exposed my lie to the audience. <laughs> Where was I at? That's right. We come out every Friday on YouTube and every podcast service. You can check us out there. If you like us there, go over to patreon.com slash EGAchievers. <clears throat> Give us the buck. Give us our exclusives. Every single month it comes out. We Again, we are very proud of our last exclusive. Your next exclusive will be in route soon. Every Patreon supporter out there. Alex, you look like you had something to add there. Oh, no, I was trying oh, to Oh, get... nothing. No. Great. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to get comfortable. If you're a freeloader, don't worry. We are, too. Head over to every single site of manageable. Give us the five stars. Give us five apples, the five androids, the five Googles, I think. That's a Google, right, Alex? Right. Thank you, yeah. Alex. <laughs> Alex, we have a huge week in news today. Uh, so let's just jump in to... Uh, the news but before we do that alex please i have a question that is burning my mind what's burning your mind man? what have you been playing i have been playing now i said i'd go back to this game mm. it's not horizon no oh. i went back to doom oh dude. yeah i'm in getting in anticipation for doom eternal yes out march 20th <clears throat> yeah i'm their pr manager if you didn't know <laughs> <laughs> um i went back because i'm actually really excited for the new doom but oh, um, the first time I played this one, I'm just like, I liked it. But it wasn't catching me. I'm like, hey, it's fine. Mm. Now I try- went back and um, I forgot that, you know, when everything gets uh, the 1X mm-hmm. update, whatever. Yeah, so the big game so it's 60 frames increase. and it feels so much more enjoyable. I don't know why. I don't know if I've been. So are you saying <clears> um, <throat> you enjoy it more now or it has helped you enjoy it? I guess. If that makes sense. I guess it helps me. It helps me stay in with it now like you mm-hmm. know and so now i'm actually in and playing it i'm not actually i'm like no this is fine i'll come to it later now i actually want to keep playing it that's good yeah so it's i don't know if it's uh, we're uh spoiled with 60 frames or anything mm. but it has for some reason it just helps because you can tell it's all smooth and it's oh, awesome definitely with yeah. smooth. I, uh, we, uh, my first game that i really mm. really noticed it was mm. borderlands three yeah. when we played that when the game first started i went to move and you felt the framing when he looked around i'm like oh god yeah. i hope this isn't the game go into settings notice it's on resolution yeah. turn it back yep. much better now once it's going 60 frames it's much better Bless you, Alex. Oh, we had a rogue sneeze there. Rogue sneeze trying to take you. Oh, I had another sneeze. Jesus, He's, He's a sneezy boy today. It's not my day. <laughs> Alex, yes. I have been playing Outer Worlds, Yeah. weirdly enough. This is a game that I originally played when it came out. Mm-hmm. Didn't touch me at all. Yeah. I was playing, I'm like, nope. Not, not. No, you Honestly, you at the time, it. was like, nope. Yeah. Not even coming back to this. Looking back, it was a... Not this, not right now. Kind of, yeah, kind that's of how game. I felt like, about Doom when mm-hmm. I first played it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that, I think a lot of people can relate to that, especially the audience. Like, yeah, not right now. Yeah, but then you can feel yourself liking it later on. I come back to it. It's not. It's got me. Yeah, yeah. I feel great. It's tough. That's, that's it's so much fun. Yeah, that's good. I, I um I was at the very beginning, so I, I haven't really oh, missed yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. literally picking it up, I'm like, oh, I, I remember everything. Uh, yeah. surprisingly. Um, so I'm. Mm-hmm. St- Still, I think really early. I've mm-hmm. made it past the, the first world, not the not the tutorial level. The yeah, first yeah. world after that, I think. Okay. Um, I don't know how long this game is, and I and uh, I think there's just so many decisions that I think I could end it very soon if I wanted to, or or it could go on longer. I'm not sure. Okay. If this is like a Sekiro situation, but having a lot of fun. The dialogue options are really fun. I like that I can pers- have such high persuasion. 
and be mm-hmm. able to like persuade people and not do stuff. Because like yeah. there was a uh, part in the game where you go to this guy and you're instructed to get a uh, a drive for your ship, I think, or you know, to like leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you get the, the like the little uh, radiator drive to to help uh, power their ship that they're on. And uh, mm. you can go there. You can either walk up to him, shoot him in the face, and just start mm. fighting everyone, or you can persuade him to go get it, or you can like lie to him and get it, or you, yeah. you know. And there's like so many different. Yeah, options. I mean, it's pretty much. It. I mean, it's by Obsidian, so it's people who did New Vegas. So I mean, I I love New Vegas. So uh, like another uh, bonus of this game was <clears> it was on Game Pass. Still yes. on Game Pass. That's that how is, I'm playing it. Yeah, Never bought that, it. Yeah, it's crazy how there there is a lot of um, titles. Mm. What new games? Yeah, new games and titles that are like that. That you know, you try it out and you know it could be a, an amazing game for mm-hmm, you. And it's mm-hmm. a, PSA if you have Game Pass, and I assume <clears throat> most people do because okay. we are always talking about it. Um, February is a huge month for Game Pass. I don't know if you saw this, Alex. I think it's Sekiro, mm-hmm. Evil Within Two. Oh, really? And like two other pretty huge games. Mm-hmm. February is a pretty wild month. Yeah. Um, of course, Grand Theft Auto Five, I believe, is still on there. Oh, yeah. Um, I th- <clears throat> is Doom on there? I'm pretty sure Doom is on Doom, there. Doom, yes, it is. I mean, Doom is on there. I, I, we can stop there. That's, That's already how, actually, how service. I'm playing it, because you own, you originally owned the physical copy. Mm-hmm. Uh, really? Yeah, when you first got it, I think it was mm-hmm. either you or your dad that had the physical mm-hmm. copy. Okay. And I didn't own it, so mm. that's how I'm playing it right now. Oh, actually. okay, that makes sense. Makes <clears throat> sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was my week. I'm excited for Apex. Yes. Um, I originally was gonna polish off some matches yesterday, mm-hmm. but then they did the weird thing where the season's over, so you don't get progression. Oh so yeah, I felt you like don't I get earning anything. Yeah. So I just was like, I'll wait till tomorrow. So yeah. I'm getting back on today. A new yeah. uh, season's live. We'll talk yeah. about that later in the run of the show. Anything? It's gonna be feel way different, at least for me. For me too. I, well, because I didn't play season three. I, I played really maybe a one match or whenever the Christmas stuff was. Is that season three? When yeah. The, okay. I played one match when it was kind of Christmas time. Yeah. And I didn't even play the Christmas event thing, and that's it. I uh, Similar situation for me. I played a little bit, got to level 30 in the Battle Pass, which, in my opinion, not that far. Yeah. I think I played two weeks of it. Mm-hmm. Never again. Yeah. But I feel an itch. Yeah. yeah. I want to get those wins, those mm-hmm. Ws. I want to play his lifeline. That new one looks cool. The Revenant guy. We're gonna go over his oh, uh, yeah, stuff yeah, later. Yeah. But Revenant looks awesome. Yeah, Alex. Yes. Let's get into the news. Rockstar co-founder leaves. This is over on IGN by Matt Kim. Don Hauser, co-founder mm-hmm. of Rockstar Games and head writer of games like Bully, Red Dead, and Grand Theft Auto, is leaving Rockstar and Take Two Games. According to Take Two Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games. Don Hauser will be leaving the company on March 11th, 2020, in a statement published ahead of the company's Q3 2020 financial report. Take Two says, "Quote: We are like, uh, sorry, let me start. Off. Quote: We are extremely grateful for his contributions. Rockstar Games has built some of the most critically acclaimed and commercially successful game worlds, a global community of passionate fans, and incredible talented team, which remains focused on current and future projects." And quote: Hauser already took a extended break. Which is one of those famous breaks of right before you quit. That's me saying that, not the article. Uh, that began in spring of 2019 after the launch of Red Dead 2 in November 2018. Then, along with his brother Sam Hauser, were executives at BMG Entertainment, <coughs> or, sorry, Interactive, before it was uh, acquired by Take Two. The Hauser brothers founded Rockstar Games under Take Two in December 1998. At Rockstar, the brothers wrote and developed games like GTA and Red Dead, but alas, oh, uh, sorry, but also Bully, Midnight Club, Los Angeles. And Smugglers Run. I didn't know they made Mid- uh, Midnight Club Los Angeles. It's a good game. I did not know that. That was a good game. Yeah. I, I, I still know people who buy that game. Mm-hmm. But I even played Bully for a little while, too. I never played Bully. Yeah. It's... It, it, I mean, it has kind of the GTA vibe, in a way, mm-hmm. but it's... You look like you're just a shit kid. Well, you're... Yeah, you're <laughs> you're you're pretty much a kid, mm-hmm. like, in this school. Mm-hmm. And you're just doing the, it's like Grand Theft Auto, but like a child version. Uh, yeah, because I mean, you're not going around and you're not you know, murdering anyone, murdering anyone. You're not but you're actually, but you get you, you. you do fight, and uh, you ride a bike and whatever that you can go across town and stuff like that. Do stuff for people. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, do stuff for people. Yeah, like you there's like there like there's like quests and stuff or oh, missions okay. and stuff. Yeah. Hauser is also credited for writer of most of Grand Theft Auto games from Grand Theft Auto 2 to Grand Theft Auto 5. Oh, wow. As well as head writer of Bully, Red Dead, Max Payne 3, and Red Dead 2. Whew. Hmm. 
this is a big deal for this gentleman leaving. Yes. I mean, a co-founder leaving is a huge deal. Oh yeah. I hear this guy is very influential of the, the overall culture culture mm-hmm. of Rockstar. So I, I say a big deal of him leaving. I'm curious if anyone will step up to replace him, or if this will be a vacuum that's spread out to everyone else. I mean, I don't know if we even hear anything after that. Like, for example, have we heard anything about Sean Layden yet? <laughs> Alex, N- nothing. We we knew Sean Layden. Yeah, and then one day we didn't know Sean. Yeah, so I, Sean. like, like, yeah, no, that's it. What happened to Sean? Lee? I would love to have his. I love to. He's one of the guys. You know, when you ask the question, where you who would you have a beer with? Phil yeah. Spencer. Yeah, from game industry. Let's oh, yeah, yeah, link yeah, history course, and all that stuff. But for the game industry, Phil Spencer. I need to get Sean Layden. I need to get into. Um, oh my God! I'm blank. I don't know how. I'm blank, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how I'm blank on his name. God of War. Uh, Corey Barlog. Corey Barlog. Corey Barlog. A nice job. I want to talk to him and be like, I, I want to hear how? some ideas of his next mm-hmm. one. And Let's how to, yeah. What happens to this. the serpent? What does he do? What's he eating? Yeah. That's what I want Is he know. secretly Kratos? Is he secretly Kratos? He's red and white. Yeah. I feel right? like that's really on the nose, though. Yeah, right? <laughs> like that snake was sent back to the, from the future. I mean, you know. It's wild. Yeah, um, pretty right. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Alex, yes. what... Does this affect GTA Six? Um, are they even making GTA Six right now? For sure, yes. I mean, I mean they have to. I think they're in core development. No, I of think. course they have to. I feel like um, though it might push the release date a little longer than what it. For example, let's say if it was announcing next year for the year after, it could probably take another year mm-hmm. just to make sure that all the. Mm-hmm ideas are in place for, for anybody who's if they're gonna take over they could be like hey uh we're, we we had these ideas before you came along are these cool with you mm-hmm. and if imagine if the person was like no, no. it's like well then well, all right. well <laughs> now you gotta remake yeah, the so game we don't know what could happen i'm curious if this i think uh rockstar is in a very interesting situation that i don't think we've ever seen before from another for, developer yeah. where we're making GTA Five. Mm. We're constantly updating the game, and it's making us so much money. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you make GTA Six? Do you? Know. I assume you would have to expand upon the online. Oh, of course, right? Yeah, because I, I, they're in a very unique situation of: I, will I, people play GTA Six if GTA Five is still being supported? Um, you understand what I mean? The, like, I think the only way they can subvert this kind of situation mm-hmm. is do more of an Overwatch two thing, yeah. where you keep the core online there, mm-hmm. but basically move it. Now, I think in GTA six it would be much different. It would be like you start over at zero with maybe a new guy, but yeah, I don't know. That game sells so much; it's hard to imagine GTA six yeah. being. No, I feel like they'll be. That's they'll, big. I feel like no. I feel. I feel like they'll. What they keep trying, like with all these other games, just make it so much bigger. Mm-hmm. And if anything, add more stuff from the past mm-hmm. to. Uh, Are you th- talking give it, locations? Yeah, loca- yeah, locations. Look, uh, characters maybe even as cameos, like you work with, or like you know, um, like just the, like. I guess vehicles, you know, things like that to make it more nostalgic. Would be like, oh, they're bringing this back. This is what I need to, you know, check this out. Because, uh, for example, in GTA Online, uh, I think you were recently able to. Was it something about Vice City? I think it was you were able to get the cl- the the club or the casino, not casino. I know there's a casino. No, yeah, yeah. Now I don't know. No, there was a there was a there was there was a like a night the one of the nightclubs. I mm-hmm. thought it was from Vice, Vice City. City. Maybe I'd be wrong. It might be. I, I don't, don't know. know. Maybe I, it's a I don't know Vice City. Well. I'm cu- I, uh, one thing that's interesting with because uh, I heard a few rumors of GTA Six being <clears throat> in Florida, in Miami specifically. Oh, I wonder if they'll ever that's bring Vice I mean, City into GTA Six. I wonder if they're interested in making something new rather than trying yeah. to make a new, like an old thing, new <clears throat> again. Oh, again, GTA Six very interesting, like kind of mm. predicament with it with everything. Um, Alex, mm. let's move on to EA. We have a lot of financial support, uh, of financial reporting. So we're gonna go through a bunch of numbers. Okay. I'm very excited about because this kind of gives us glimpses into into what could be. And with this specific one, like we're gonna go over EA, all this stuff. So okay. let's just start off. So. First, top of the mail. Battlefield 6 coming as 20 
21 Woo! title. <laughs> this is over on Segment Next I like by Rana Muneeb. The report uh, was uh, that was released by Electronics Arts recently was a, accompanied by a press conference. They start. They stated that Battlefield Six will not be released in fiscal year 2021. Aww. The fiscal year range from April 20 to March 2021. This is me talking, by the way. This is, uh, in my opinion, leads to the rumored Battlefield Three being a launch title for uh, the new systems. Mm. What do you think? Battlefield Three? Yeah. But, sorry, Battlefront Three. Oh, Battlefront. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Battlefront, as in Star, Star Wars. Wars. Battlefront. Yes. I can see it. Do you, I <clears throat> so. In my opinion, everything creeping up from the celebration event they did with yeah. the Star Wars, Star Wars Episode Nine, mm-hmm. I feel like they're gonna get one more Battlefront in before the deal ends. Like, and I now, do you think it's gonna call it be called Battlefront Three or is it gonna be called something else? I think just Battlefront Three. Okay, it might be Battlefront colon something if they want it to try to get the stigma away from Battlefront mm-hmm. Two, but I think just Battlefront yeah. 3. Well, because I mean the first I feel like they've so, made. Mm. Well, I feel like they've made good on that. They took away all the stuff. They they you know, hopefully they learn from the hopefully from, yeah. learn from the garbage that they did. Yeah, the absolute trash mm-hmm. fire that was Battlefront Two. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think Battlefront Three is a thing. The only doubt I have is there's no Star Wars movie coming out anytime soon. Yeah, that's the only doubt. And every Battlefront has been lined up with a Star Wars release. Yeah. Because I believe Battlefront One was Force Awakens. I mean, all we have is sh- all we have is the shows. The only thing that they could do is if they add Mandalorian to the game or uh, some other thing. I don't know. I don't think they will. I feel like Battlefront Two is such an ultimate experience that's mm-hmm. going to be hard to make a three and justify it. Because yeah. we got like all the worlds from the movies. Like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. do you do to make it better? I don't know. So that's the only doubt I have. But I do feel like a Battlefront Three is in the works just to get a little more money out of that deal. Mm-hmm. Now. This might be an easy one, Alex, but does Disney renew the deal with EA or do they splinter off to someone else? Because uh, if you guys didn't know, Disney came to EA when they bought Star Wars and made a 10 year deal to exclusively uh, uh, deal out with just EA. And was Jedi Fallen Order part of that deal? Like, is that yes. okay? Well, the deal is I be, I, they just make games. So mm-hmm. however many games they can make in a ten year time span. Because I, believe, I, I don't, don't feel think like we're limit. done with uh, games like Jedi Fallen Order. So I believe the deal is they can keep the IP. Hmm. So like they can still make Jedi Fallen Order without the the Disney renewal. They'll just have to pay them for the licensing hmm. of Star Wars. So I think I, I think know. Jedi Fallen Order is still a thing. I think Battlefront okay. will still be a thing. But I think Disney will not renew. They're not doing another 10-year contract. They're just going to go someone else. We need a Star Wars game with Naughty Dog writers. We almost got that, Alex. Yeah, I know. That was going to be Fallen Order. Um, it was called, uh, what was it? Star you, Wars? You talking about uh, 1313? Or no, no. 1313 was with LucasArts. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That was when they got closed are you, down. Are you talking about the, old, or the, the other one? The other one with uh, the lead writer from Uncharted uh, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, uh, what's her name? Oh my god, I'm blanking. I know what you're talking about. I want is an N or something. Can you look it up, please? Yeah. Uncharted Rider. He'll come up. Um, but she was making a game, but th- that fell out. They canceled that project, and then it went into Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is a good game. But I, I, I wanted, I wanted that Uncharted Star Wars game so bad. That's all I wanted <laughs> was just make a Star Wars Uncharted game. But alas, we will not get it. Yeah. I wish. Alex, mm. EA makes a sh- ton of money yeah. off of microtransactions. Gaming giant Electronics Arts reported earnings for its holiday quarter today, and the company performed ahead of expectations, in particular revenue from EA's microtransaction bucket called Live Services, reached nearly $1 billion. Yes, yeah, so $1 billion with a B. Another highlight was Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which performed above expectations. EA made a total of $1.593 billion in revenue for the quarter and $361 million in profit. So as you can see, microtransactions are a very big business for EA. A major part of EA's microtransaction revenue comes from the ultimate team modes for EA sports games, including FIFA, Madden, and NHL. The publisher also said Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order performed significantly above expectations. EA was modeling sales from 6 to 8 million copies, but now the company is expecting sales to reach 10 million copies during the current fiscal year ending in March 20. 
uh, March 31st. Mm-hmm. Additionally, EA said Star Wars Battlefront 2 performed above expectations as well, due in part as the renewed interest in Star Wars overall thanks to the rise of Skywalker. Moving to a different title, EA said Apex Legends saw higher player engagement during Season 3 than Season 2, and EA will be looking to build on momentum for the upcoming Season 4. The company also teased that Respawn will bring Apex Legends to at least one new platform during the year. It's already confirmed for mobile, but Nintendo Switch version seems unlikely. So it's probably just mobile, is what they're talking about. So we'll probably get a, a mobile Apex Legends, whatever that is. Or, they, tra- th- or they try something with Stadia. One thing I am happy with <laughs> Stadia, geez. One thing I am happy to see is, is Jedi Fallen Order performing well. Yes. Because that tells we want single player still. Yeah. Which um, is... EA's like almost kryptonite it seems it always needs multiplayer or something with microtransactions so let's hope they keep to this kind of yeah. single player still making money off that just to keep us happy and then they can keep their microtransactions for their EA sports games um, Amy Henning thank you God that's Lord. creator Amy returning. Henning thank you you had the yeah, end because you hit Henning. yeah I was like me <laughs> yeah. you were trying to think about it you had the end yeah so yeah she yeah she she did the Uncharted games she, yeah, yeah. they picked her up to make the Star Wars game and I can imagine she was no, like this is terrible and left yeah <laughs> um, but yeah that's everything with that Any, anything standing out for you Alex anything commenting on this um, I'm excited for Battlefield 6 I'm just hoping there's not another Battle Royale in there there definitely will be well they'll try I just I, I what happened to Battlefield Five? Whatever what happened, what happened okay, to that I, game? And it see, just fell apart. And see, my thing is, I was enjoying these war stories, but now it's becoming. Eh, I wanted like a full flesh, just one story, because these war stories, I'm like, I like the one, I like this one, but then we change it, and I'm like, but I was liking this one. I mean, even though they're all good, I'm like, keep me with this one the whole time. So, like, with, for example, Battlefield 4 was the last one that had, like, one full flesh story. I mean, I liked it. And then 3 was awesome, so. Give me Battlefield Bad Company 3. I, you gosh, cowards. I wish. Do it. Oh. Give, get the writers back. That, get the that, actors back. Just give me a remaster. The 1 and 2, uh, no. one and two co- uh, like, I will accept pack. nothing less than Bad Company 3. Do you, you understand? More achievements, man. There was a rumor that it was happening and then they cut it for this f- Battlefield Five, which turned out so well. Mm-mm. I think they want. I think they need to go back to roots of their original popularity with Battle- yeah. Battlefield Four. Um, because three like, even three was yeah, really really like everybody well, loved three. I feel like everyone really loves four, so I feel like trying oh, to both, bring both, yeah. bring four and Bat and Company and kind of make one game mm-hmm. and just modernize it, just make it modern. Stop yeah. trying to like get the World War Two thing. I don't think any, yeah. I think the fad is over. I think mm-hmm. we all wanted World War Two games, and we got yeah, no, them. I, I'm, and now I, it's like, I'm over it's it. En- it's enough. Yeah, we, we have enough now. Yeah. So I think we're going back to like modern. Modern, stuff. yeah. Like that's why the new Call of Duty. I was like, I enjoyed it so much because I was just, I, I'm done with the World War stuff. I've done so many. I'm, I, it's funny that I've got, I'm fatigued on World War stuff. Like I, I'm not saying no to Korean War or yeah, or, or stuff Vietnam like stuff or we haven't like that. haven't yeah. been really into, but like specifically the same a uh, few battles. I'm done with that and uh. uh I'm, I'm almost done with like futury yeah stuff kind of like just I, give me the modern stuff that's happening i want modern stuff and i but the futury stuff is not out of the like with some just, aspects to that apex yeah good good example futury in a way that's not like weird i know it's hard mean. to explain but you know futury yeah. in a way that that is kind of out of the realm of possibility but it's mm, fun yeah it makes sense uh, I'm not picking up like an ionized cannon and shooting something. Not Halo. Yeah, I don't think they could do Halo. So no, don't try to do a Halo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Halo tried doing Call of Duty. Oh God! No, like God. just the way it plays. Yeah, yeah. With uh, five, right? Yes. With the strafing, uh, I didn't like that very much. I don't know. Google responds to Sadia Games. This is over on PC Gamer by Andy Chalk. Earlier this week, Google announced that Tuna Games will be added to Stadia Pro free games lineup up on February first. Guilt and Metro Exodus, and in in that two others, Rise of the Tomb Raider 20th Celebration and Samurai Showdown, will be removed oh, wow. on January 31st. It was a fairly minor update as both Guilt and Metro Exodus have been previously announced for the platform, although without a date, it seemed especially thin gruel in light of a very large thread on Reddit complaining that it had been 40 days since the last new game announcement release, future update, or real community update. 
It didn't seem like a big step forward or for a platform struggling to find its footing, nor did a response on Reddit from a community manager, Grace from Google, who said they, quote, understand where your frustrations are coming from, end quote, but had no few further information to share. Don't you love that, Alex? Mm. We understand. Yeah, we, we get it. We right. understand. But n- n- without saying anything else, just saying, that's it. we understand. That's, what, that's like, all they're okay, saying. Okay, we would like something else. Uh, speaking to Game Industry, Google rep disputed the Reddit ca- uh, complaint, saying that the Stadia team has been providing weekly updates on the Stadia community forum, but similar to Grace from Google's response, there was a little else of substance in the statement. Quote, we understand the desire to hear more specifics on games. After all, that is what about the games of course not all 120 titles will be announced by the stated team as we leave it to the pu- uh, publishers to make the announcement about their ip and which platforms it will appear on just as we will do in the upcoming uh exclusive content coming to stadia the rep said i feel like that zero needs to just drop <laughs> there are a lot of reasons for the time of those game announcements anything from planned promotions or events titles readiness proximity to the first playable demo shareholder requirements etc we continue to work closely with our publishing and developing partners and are here to support them in all areas. We are excited to share more about some of the exclusive games coming to Stadia soon. One of those word solid things where it's like, what did that just say? It, it Anything from plan to promotion to events, title readiness, proximity to first playable demo, shareholder requirements. I feel like that just, just sounded a bunch I, of I, I feel like they're just putting words together <laughs> just to make it sound like they they ha- they have something coming yeah, but I don't feel like they do. I feel like I just said a statement that was not a statement at the same time. Is the 120 new games that Google Rep referred to were announced earlier this month, but no title or release targets were set. Google said only that quote we are tracking more than 120 games coming to Stadia in 2020 and are targeting more than 10 games in the first half of this year. <laughs> Okay, that at the end part got me. We are targeting more than ten games in the first half of the year. So where's so the other where, ten games? So where's the, in the other first half of the year? So the, so uh, the other half <laughs> will have a hundred and ten. Hundred and ten games. Woof! This has been a, I mean, a left and a right hook constantly with an uppercut every now and then to Google Stadium. I feel like, I feel, uh, I feel like. Once X Cloud comes out, oh god, they're gonna. Uh, uh, is it's like the equivalent of getting punted in the head, right? It's like okay, it's like Stadia is the Wii U, <laughs> and X Cloud is the Switch. Switch. Almost like coming to revive it. It's like yeah. this is how you do it. All yeah, right? this is what they wanted. Because I've heard nothing but yeah about stadia and it's it's crazy because i was very tempted to getting that founders Me edition because i mean it sounded so cool you can pull up the episodes yeah. i want i said i was going to get it yeah and then and just we just kept seeing rumor this after rumor kept no. coming and they were like yeah we're, you're gonna have to play wired and then like the mm-hmm. only thing yeah. that will be up is i think only pixel and yeah. chromecast yeah. and that's it you and know, i was like yeah uh, you know it's crazy i'm not paying Why that much money not for a beta. give us a demo if Destiny is on there and that game is what is isn't it free to play to like a certain level? Uh, well, it's free to play basically with content. So okay, you're free to play through basically Destiny Two Vanilla with yeah. the Year One expansions. Well, they well, and they give you that, don't they? Yeah. Uh, okay. Like with the they founder you, pack. Like, with the founder pack, yes. Okay. Well, I was trying to think. I was like, you know, like like XCloud is giving me a demo for free. Like I'm playing it. I'm enjoying it. Mm. There's no way to, for me to try Stadia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not very welcoming, right? Yeah, Drop it's not welcoming. Yeah. Bucks. Even though 140 not too much, but... That's a lot. That's a lot for a unproven software. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm a cheap man. <laughs> that's a lot. It, it is a lot. I'm just say, it, I'm saying that's a lot for unproven software. We, no, we had course, no proof other than a couple literally like, like people it's, going it's, to E3 and yeah. saying it worked great. Yeah, like to me it's, you a, it on? it's a lot for just straight out the straight out the shoot. Mm-hmm. Like just that 140, that's it. And then there's like no new games. There yeah. hasn't been a single new game on there. And then the next new game is going to be in the ending quarter with 110 games. <laughs> hey man, they're going to come with 110 games like I said, in 6 drop months. Drop to zero so because I feel like, like <laughs> it's only beginning in like 12 games. That's like that's almost ten games a month. If we hold it to them, that one hundred and ten yeah. games are coming out. That's, that's what it's aiming for. It says for, it's 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 ten games a month. No, hey, prove it. I guess I don't know. Yeah, hey, I'll eat my words if I'm wrong. Oh, for for sure, and and I don't even think they'll be. 
It's funny. I do, right now, mm-hmm. 100 bucks if you're right. Hypothetically, of Who, course, me? I ain't giving you or, any money. Yeah, you. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, you. I see how, I see how you feel. So, does Google stick with this? With what part? With Stadia, <laughs> period. Oh, do you think they're going to keep... Do uh, they stay with this? Do they, do they do the Google thing and bow out, or do they stay? I think they're going, I think they're going to try, but it's going to fail. And they're so, gonna, it's, so it's gonna is it's, Stadia still here in five years? No. Oh whoa. Okay. Unless okay. I, well, but, but that's from my speculation of right now. Right now. And let's say in a year or two, they they it come, when it comes out or whatever, and it's like really good and everything, it could change. Yeah. But if it stays I and heard, they keep and they keep doing what they're doing right now, no. I heard a very compelling argument saying this Stadia isn't a game, right? Because we mm-hmm. hear this game this all the time. Oh Destiny yeah, of course. Two. Um, Fortnite to an extent. Mm-hmm. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront two mm-hmm. come out garbage. Mm-hmm. GTA Online garbage. Okay. The, broken doesn't work. Yeah, doesn't fulfill the promises. Okay, does a relaunch in quotes. Yeah, two yep. to two years maybe a year and a half later. Yeah, perfect game. This is what everyone happy with. The community yep. is happy. See, blah that's... blah blah. And they were arguing that for a game you can do that. For a platform that you have to continually buy things and pay money. You can't. Yeah, I don't know, like because you can get yeah, a lot of. And I'm leaning towards you can't. I don't think no, because I feel like you can get a lot of soured people to where like when they first, but let's say they bought this founder thing and they get really upset. Didn't use it. They were, yeah, they not were, telling their friends. Yeah, they tell their friends, oh, Stadia, did you hear about? It? Yeah, I, yeah, I did, and, and then when it does come out, me and they thing. did fix it, but no, nobody's gonna trust it. Because mm-hmm. be like, oh, it I've heard about this when it came out before. What changed now? No, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. And also, you have to pay money to also pay games to, That's even though there is a free service. It, it's just like jumbled mess at this point. I think, I think though, they're I think they're here in five years, not in ten. They will not be here. Whatever happened years. to Google Glass? <laughs> That was like the coolest thing. Because I, 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 I love Google. So I, I mean, I have a Pixel. I mean, I love their stuff. I remember when people were complaining about Google Ask. Cause like, <laughs> they were like, they could be watching porn. I'm like, that's my dream, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey. I'm having dinner. I mean, no, nobody said that when they gave him the idea for VR. Uh, <laughs> and now look at everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Xbox got their financial report as well. This is on GameSpot by Eddie McCooch. Microsoft has released its latest earnings report detailing how the business is pouring across all sectors. Overall, business is good for Microsoft, but the Xbox division is eh, struggling just a tad bit. Gaming revenue at Xbox first quarter ended December 31st, the holiday quarter. Dropped by 21%, which works out at a downturn of $905 million. Revenue from Xbox One console sales dropped by a significant 43% due to fewer systems sold and lower prices. Revenue from game sales services fell by 11% or $295, Microsoft said, and it is particularly tough quarter to compare against because holiday 2018 was so strong due to a, quote, third-party title. It wasn't specified, but analyst Daniel Ma said it was Fortnite. <laughs> They're like, it's we're down because we sold so much because of Fortnite. Uh, there was some good news for Microsoft during the quarter as subscription revenue grew. This is no surprise given Microsoft is ramping up Xbox Game Pass. Look at that six month period ended December 31st. Gaming revenue overall was down 16% or $1.1 billion. The downturn was driven hardware sales that were down 40% and content and services revenue dropping 6% or $302 million overall. Microsoft no longer officially reports monthly active Xbox Live users, but CEO Sethi Nadili, Nadelia said on uh, her, Nadella. Nadella, thank you. Said on an early call that Microsoft set a new record for the most monthly active Xbox Live viewers during the latest period. He also said that XCloud is off to a good start with quote hundreds of hundreds of people signing up for the beta. He all oh sorry hundreds, hundreds of, of thousands. thousands. I was like wait once I said the quote I was like yeah I had to make sense. About it. I was like hundreds of hundreds, hundreds of thousands. There yeah. we go. So people they're probably the beta, yep. they're probably sneaking up on a million subscribers actively using mm-hmm. Xbox. Probably I don't know the people signing up for the beta. He also said Xbox Game Pass subscriptions doubled during the quarter. Across all business categories, Microsoft posts revenue of $36.9 billion for the quarter, which is up 14%. Net income was also strong as Microsoft made $11.6 billion in profit during the three-month period. Oh, my God. Yeah. it's a lot of money. It is expected that the Microsoft gaming revenue is slowing down as the Xbox One is end of its life cycle. Microsoft's next system, the Xbox Series X, releases this holiday with Halo Infinite as the launch title. That should help improve Microsoft fortunes while the company also continues to expand Xbox Game Pass and xCloud as revenue drivers. 
The real money in gaming for Microsoft is in software and services, not console sales. Quote, this business is around software and service growth. That is the profitable part of the business. Selling the hardware is not the profitable part of the business. End quote. This is by Phil Spencer. Microsoft gets a cut of all games sold on Xbox, so when it's out of the description, well, as both games did, Microsoft benefits as well. Similarly, when their sales moderate, moderate, Microsoft sees a drop-off in its third-party royalty payments. We're Xbox gamers, Alex. We yeah. partake in the Xboxes. Mm-hmm. What do you think of this? Um, Which part? <laughs> all of it. There, there was a lot of money it, it involved. There was a lot of, so money, a lot a lot of numbers. numbers. And yeah. I'll start off. As expected. Yeah. We're getting slowing down. We're going no, to a new course, system. Yeah. No one's going to buy a system when, when, if you haven't bought it yet, uh, no, why yeah. not just wait a year and just get the new one? Yeah. So we're, we're nearing what? Let's say this thing comes out in November. Mm, we're likely. almost to eight months. Eight months I away. Mean, and there's no, nobody, yeah, nobody's going to want to buy anything being that close to a new s- generation of system. So, For sure. Yeah. So we're this, getting close yeah. to that. Good to see Game Pass is as thriving as it is. Best mm-hmm. value in gaming, because I repeat to say, yeah. best thing since sliced oh, my bread. Goodness, yes. Since Betty White, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is awesome. Yeah. I will keep championing Game Pass Project X Cloud. How is that going? I personally can't use it because I don't have an Android device. Mm-hmm. So are you, have you been messing with that at all? Uh, I haven't recently because I've just been playing everything on my X. But um, and I haven't traveled much. I've just been going to work and back. Mm-hmm. But um, I just keep seeing things about XCloud that I need, I should use it more so mm-hmm. I can give more reviews on it and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But from like the times that I have played it, it's it's fun. That's good. Yeah. Uh, what, is there a specific game that you're like, mm, this is actually working pretty nice? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh God! What game? Can you show me Halo? I think Halo. Was I did work. I, I Halo tried Halo. Five was working really well. I think it was. It was working at one point, and then I guess my Wi-Fi was acting weird, so I started mm-hmm. glitching a little bit. But mm-hmm. for surprising, for being a, a fast-paced shooter like mm-hmm. that, it. I mean, that was that was. It was pretty good. And then yeah, and then I tried Forza because mm-hmm. I was at um, I was at a doctor's appointment mm-hmm. and I was playing Forza. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's like dream stuff, right? Yeah, there. that's like that's what you want. You want the. Go yeah. to a doctor, sit down, yep. look around. All right, time yeah, to play. Yeah, because my thing is, like, you know, I take my Switch with me, mm-hmm. and I'll hold it, mm-hmm. but I'm like, do I really want to be that guy, and I'm holding a Switch at a doctor's appointment? And I mean, I mean, I don't mind, but sometimes I'm oh, like... Oh, no, 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 there's for sure the stigma. I get no, it. yeah, I get and, it. I, like, and I don't want people looking at me, so I'm like, I'll un, un, undo the Joy-Cons, stick them in my pocket with the screen, and I'm like, all right, I'll sit down, mm-hmm. look around, make sure nobody's watching me, and then I'll start taking out the behemoth, and I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. there we go. Hey, man. I, I've learned to just not care anymore. I'll just yeah. take that switch but out, see, play it in, in, in golden. But see, I feel better with the switch because the other well, that day I went and played the X Cloud, I had my Xbox controller nice. with me. So I'm over here sitting with my screen. They look around, and then I just pull out a damn Xbox controller. I just start nice. playing. There was I this one guy it. looked at me, and he was like, "All right." I like to think he was jealous. He was like, how the hell is yeah. he doing that? <laughs> and he, was like, he looks over and he sees well, Halo going. He's well, like, oh, I was playing Forza and he was like, nice car. I was, I was playing, I was using Skyline. Nice. Yeah. So he was like, nice car. I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, he was jealous. He wanted, he wanted, I was like, hey, mind, yeah. mind if I get in? Mind yeah, if I no, get in the game? No, um, it's, it's, I love it so far. It's right. cool. That's good. That's good. Uh, again, I, re- I reiterate Game Pass is good. All this is to be seen. Um, I don't think we can read too much into this. Yeah. All can all looking good. Um, X, mm. Xbox Mystery Port. I just wanted to do a quick note. Okay. The Mystery Port um, on the actual system, it was one of the weird ports that we didn't know what it oh, was. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, for yeah. expandable storage, it seems to be. It seems oh, to be some okay. sort of new thing Xbox is trying to do to make it easier for add-on storage. Okay. I don't know what that means. Maybe they have some special storage device they want to start using. So, n- nothing, uh, so it's something different other than it, the external, yeah, external hard drives? Yeah. I, maybe they don't want a USB to be taken up, so they're using some yeah. new cord. But that's what that was. Yeah. Okay. We're moving on. I thought they have an adapter. So like or an adapter, let's say yeah. if you have an extended hard drive or whatever, mm-hmm. it's like an adapter to that port, mm-hmm. so you don't take up a USB port. Yeah, for sure. Alex, mm. PS5 price is a quote balancing act. This is on IGN by Chris Prisman. Prisman. Mm. Sony hasn't fully decided on a price for PlayStation Five yet. It seems this is in part due to wanting to see how its comp- competition, the Xbox Series X, is priced, as well as a number of other monetary factors. Chief Financial Officer Hiroki uh, to- Todoki. Uh, stated he intends to ensure, quote, smooth transition, end quote, for Sony from PS4 to PS5. But he has questioned on how he will do this and ask which Sony can control. And the answer is complicated. When it comes to how Sony will price the PS5, uh, Totoki has said, quote, first, 
we must absolutely control the labor cost, the uh, personnel cost. It must be controlled. And it leads to what should be recognized as a cost. We will definitely control that. And the initial ramp up and how much we can uh, prepare. And initially, we will work on the production and the sales. We will have to prepare the right volume as we launch this. What is now very clear or visible is because we are competing in the space. So it's very difficult to discuss anything about the price at this point of time. And depending upon the price level, we may have to determine the promotion that we're going to deploy and how much cost we are prepared to pay. So it's a question of balance. And because it's a balancing act, it's very difficult to say anything concrete at this point in time. When I said a smooth transition, we mean that we definitely choose the optimal approach and that we would try to have the best balance so that we will be able to profitable in life during the life of this product. I know exactly what this means. <laughs> yes, it does. Me too. Yep. So, uh, Todeki notes that given PlayStation 5 is competing with the Xbox Series X, which has also yet to be given a price, it's, quote, very difficult to discuss anything, end quote, in relation to price, but typically in company's hand. Well, this means Sony will <laughs> wait until Xbox announces price first, or the company ultimately decides to announce a price first is unclear. But for now, the approach suggests that Sony is waiting to waity, willing to wait on this announcement. However, Totoku, Totoki's statement also implies that the pricing which apparently is not set in stone will factor into the level of promotion needed to sell the playstation 5 <laughs> what, 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 what's what's some racking in that brain it's over funny there? because i could all i could think about is uh the the heads of sony and be like all right let's see what xbox is gonna put the price at i feel like phil spencer and xbox are be like all right let's see what sony's <laughs> price is gonna be at and they're all just staring at they're, each other they're just waiting they like put I, I, literally i feel like it's almost a poker game yeah all right here's one card and you and the other person like okay there's one card. Mm-hmm. All right. Or I'll raise it. I'll put this two cards. He's like, oh, well, I'll put these three then. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. it's literally that. Th- this, I feel like it's exact what they're going to happen. So, for example, I have a feeling Sony is trying to go an above price. I don't think so. You don't think so? Only because I think Xbox, and they have said mm. that they want they want to be the strongest period they're not going to be out strength xbox or sony xbox okay yeah of course they're they're not they're not going to be underpowered yeah period yeah that is a very strong statement because that means money right oh, that yeah, means yeah. it's going to be expensive yeah so it's going to be bare minimum five hundred dollars yeah oh, excuse me sony mm-hmm. is in an interesting spot because i feel like sony is the only one quote-unquote competing mm-hmm I do not think Xbox honestly cares what PS4 price is. Oh no, I'm sure they don't. They just, I mean, they just want to sell their system. I think PS4 slash Sony, whatever you want to call. It, I think they're more. I think the. I think they're competing almost against themselves now. Yeah. Because they're competing against someone that isn't in. It looks like they've just given up and like we're not really doing this anymore. We're just gonna kind of do our thing. Yeah. So I. Th- I f- this I feel like this we're in a really weird like we said yeah. poker game. Yeah. Where. Cause, One side's playing yeah. and the other side seems to be playing just done like checkers. Like, yeah, like we're just there's two completely different games yeah. that I feel like Sony almost doesn't want to admit because I th- mm. I don't think they have any intention of or Xbox I, I'm sorry Xbox has any intention on matching anything. Mm-hmm. I don't think they came out and said we're going to be the strongest because they wanted to be stronger than the PlayStation. Mm. I think they wanted to be the strongest because that's what people want. They want the graphics. Oh, yeah, they of want course. the thing. Yeah. And it's then they'll make any, a not, second it, product that's yeah. cheaper for the people who need to. Have I don't it even think they're trying to be bucks. competitive. I think that yeah, they want Game Pass, right? Yeah, <laughs> he even and Phil Spencer read the, read the quote earlier. I don't care about the sales. So the console sales isn't what I want anymore. I want yeah. the Game Pass. That's yeah. what I want. I want constant revenue every month. Yeah, not big. I lumps want of be, sum uh, yeah. at one time. He wants to see people keep coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I do think that's a very interesting cat and mouse game we have now where one side is like i said playing checkers the other side is mm. playing a poker and we're n- nowhere near close to acting on the other mm. any closing statements i do you want to go back on? i feel like sony is i don't know if they're thinking high or something but i feel like it let's say series x is gonna be uh let's say four or five hundred mm-hmm. they're gonna be like okay ours is gonna be around there too just so they can see, cause like, because if they go high, they have to go high to be competitive. Because Sony is being the competitive, competitive one. Because I think they're in an interesting spot. Because Sony will not make two skews. Period. No, Sony will make co- one skew not. Yeah. and make another skew later on. I think yeah, Xbox yeah. is completely down yeah. for making a X strong yeah. system yeah, 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 PC yeah. weird thing. Yeah, and then making a hundred to three hundred dollar 
Yeah. Plug this in. This is a, this is a Chromecast, essentially. Yeah. This is a Chromecast. Much. You plug up and you can play Project X Cloud on it. Yeah. I, again, the, playing poker. <laughs> I'm just picturing Phil Spencer playing checkers by himself. You know what I mean? Like just picture yeah. that in your head. Yeah. That's what I got in my head. Just he's playing by himself, and uh, Sony's over there like throwing king. down like aces, and he's king, like, "I'm king, gonna win." King me. King me. King me. And he's like, throws a joker, and he's like, that, yeah. "That's not even poker." Anything to end on this? Um, I just, I hope that Sony, because I'm sure they can't blow it. I just hope they don't make any de- rash decisions. I think the only thing that will hurt Sony is Sony in their hubris. And what I mean by that is we get a PS3 scenario where they're that, like. That's, my, that's why I kept saying. We're going to be underpowered PS- and we're charging premium. That's, because if that's my Xbox thing. comes out and it's five hundred bucks, but it probably should be priced at five fifty or six hundred. Mm-hmm. If PlayStation is also five hundred and is vastly weaker, mm-hmm. then that's just clear cut for most people, and you just can't. That's do that. what my issue is because that's why I was saying I feel like Sony's wants higher, so they keep because Microsoft keeps saying they're most strongest whatever. So the um, their Sony is like, oh well, they can't be at five; they have to go bigger. Mm-hmm. So I feel like. My price is as I told you, Series X no more than five. I think five, PS Five is gonna be. They're 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 wanting six. <laughs> no, I don't think so. And I I don't think they can. Mm. That's why they're waiting to see. Okay, if it's at five, we can't do six because nobody will buy it. I don't think anyone don't. will go over five though. And I, and that's coming from me. I think the Xbox will probably. I don't know. I think the Xbox would probably be six hundred, but it won't because I just stick like. What if they go track. lower? What if they go four? There's no way. If there is, I because no, because it's because they said that's it, the ultimate trump card. I didn't yeah. see coming. If Xbox tries to undersell and doesn't mind losing money, then I, I mean, they, I, I have no Phil idea said, how you, he does. He all he care, he doesn't he all he cares about is people coming back. That's true. That, and that's how you get people to come. Mm-hmm. Make, Make it an cheaper. insanely cheap price. Get and, them in and, 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 and get Sony, them with, and then get so, them with Game and Pass. You know what? When Sony sees that, they're gonna be like, we can't afford that. <sighs> so they'll stay it at five. And they're like, you're wild, Alex. I love, I love it. That's that's all, that's it. that's that's what that's what I'm saying. Similar to Dracula series on Netflix, you're 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 biting, mm. you're sucking on them. Do, yeah. <laughs> let's let's keep the, let's have that for the topic for after the news. Okay. Let's, let's have this these shows. <laughs> PlayStation, PlayStation sales. We're gonna talk some PlayStation sales. So this is a quick note. PS4 recently surpassed 106 million systems sold since Good November gracious. 20. 13 debut that is wild Mm -hmm. playstation sales um figuratively from software this is by on twitter by daniel mod again fantastic you should follow daniel mod he's a great uh, analysis of video games this is from his twitter sony has updated its sales through figures for ps4 due to increased accuracy in tracking sony previously reported that retail and digital software sell through was 1.15 billion at the end of 2018 the new number is 1.18 a uh, billion dollars, Goodness or gracious. sorry, billion units. End of 2018 has been updated from eight eight hundred and seventy six million to nine hundred and twenty four million. Sony has updated sell through figures for PS4 software due to increased accuracy in tracking. Sony, oh, I accidentally did the same thing twice. My bad. <coughs> I see it. I did yeah. want to do the end note. The above numbers refer to games sold at retail or digital, so this does not include PS Plus titles or add on content. Mm. So there's no doubling up, yep. which is good. Yep. So this is clear numbering. That's pretty good because oh no, their numbers are good. That means yep. what each person what is this? So one point one eight, and they've sold one hundred and six. So yeah, that's like ten games for every system. So on average, a person has ten games. Oh yeah, that's pr- that's pretty and insane. That's, and that's saying that each game was what sixty bucks. Uh, well, yeah, th- this is units, right? Yeah, this is units. Yeah. So this is how many units, not money. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, so this yeah, is yeah. units. So, okay. so saying 1.18, uh, yeah, gotcha. and there's 106 million systems. Units, so, yeah, I gotcha, gotcha. So each system has on average 10, 10 games attached to it, whether it be physical or digital. They're all mixed up, so it's hard yep. to tell which one. Um, but I think the new numbers is like 60% digital and 40% physical or something like that. Gotcha. So the vast majority of that's digital sales. Wild. Good for, oh, good for Sony, always killing yeah. it. Still killing it since 2013. Um, and yeah, it's that de- it's definitely been their generation. Oh, 
it's funny because we recently, I think it was two weeks ago, <clears throat> we, we read on the, the Who Won Generational, or no, Top Selling Systems yeah. was updated. And the f- top five were PlayStation. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, PS1, yeah, sure. 2, 3, and 4. And I think the, what was it, the Wii, I think was one of them or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Which is well, surprising because, I mean, 360 did really good for its generation. 360 was six, wasn't it? Wasn't six it? Six or seven. Was that, was it, did it sold, did it not sell better than PS3? It sold like w- like right underneath PS3. Oh, okay. Because like I was about to say, I thought, they, I thought they sold better than PS3 because it was originally a- yes, and then at the very very end of the generation, mm, PlayStation Three I sold so, a bunch yeah. for I don't know why, maybe for Uncharted or something. I, I, I don't yeah. know, but we'd have to look back. But yeah, Blu-ray players, <laughs> that too probably. Um, but yeah, moving on from that, Switch sales by uh, this is over in Gamachi by Sal Romano. Nintendo Switch has sold. F- 52.48 million units worldwide as of December 31st, 2019. Nintendo announced in its latest earnings re- uh, release a total of 10.81 million Switch hardware and 64.64 million software were sold during the three months ended December 31st. Nintendo has revised its previously announced forecast that it will sell 18 million Switch units uh, between April 2019 and March 2020 to 19.5 million units. Nintendo also shared update sales numbers for its first-party Switch styles. Revealing the first official numbers for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield and Luigi's Mansion 3, the 10 best-selling first-party Switch titles are as followed. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 22.96 million units. Super Smash Bros. Uh, Ultimate, 17.68 million. Super Mario Odyssey, 16.59 million. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, 16.34. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. 16.06 16.06 million. I'll tell you why that's significant in a second. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, 11.76. Splatoon 2, 9.8. Super Mario Party, 9.1. This is all million. New Super mm-hmm. Mario Bros. U Deluxe, 5.85 million. Luigi's Mansion 3, 5.37. And then they also uh, announced additional sales numbers, including Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, 4.1. Fire Emblem Three Houses, 2.5, which is disappointing that it didn't sell more so it's a really mm-hmm. good game ring fit adventure at 2.1 astro train at a million and rounding it out the best game on the switch marvel ultimate alliance 3 the black <laughs> order at 1.02 million more than 310.65 million switch games have been sold worldwide also during the call they did mention uh please note we have no plans to launch a new nintendo switch model during 2020 so we get a concrete we are not launching no, a system. They're not launching, but they, they may could discuss reveal. a new system, yeah. but they will not launch um, one in 2020. These numbers, are these all between the same range? So of this is time. From, is this the same April 2019 to 2020? Yes, this is well this is updated from then. So yes. Okay, so, so all the games are the same time too? to to um, yeah. Okay. Because I this, it was just the units of the system. Yeah, so the first thing is a total of 10.81 million switch hardware. Yeah. And 6.64 million software were sold during the three oh, I months see I see ended it. December. Th- so the Got last it. three months yep. ending in December 31st. So uh, uh, October, November, December. Gotcha. What's wild. A lot more software than this. Is- <laughs> yeah. So po- uh, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, 6.06 million. Mm. That, ga- that game came out no. oh, December. No, December. November 10th. Was it December 4th? Why am I blanking on this? No, no, no. Right was it November 10th, December 4th? No, December 4th is, was not it. So it was November 10th, right? I feel like it was November 10th. Um, needless, it had a month. Pokemon Sword Pokemon Shield had a month, and it sold more than the majority of the games they've ever released in mm-hmm. a month, and all of these games have been out since the launch of the system. November 15th, you were close. <sighs> so that means they sold so we've had more units in a month and a half than... Almost all of their first parties, other than Mario, Smash, Mario Odyssey, Legend mm-hmm. of Zelda Breath We've of had Wild. about two and a half, almost three months. So it's higher, obviously. Yeah. So it's even higher now, but yeah. 6.06. So it's definitely past Breath of the Wild. Um, and it probably past Mario Odyssey. So Pokemon Sword and Shield might be on track to be the third most sold uh, game on Switch. It's crazy. Wild. It's only been it's out Pokemon, a month and man. A half. People love their Pokemon. Hey, man. I didn't know they liked it that much. Good lord. And now, again, they do do the weird trick of you have this two games. So. Oh, yeah. Sword like, and you, Shield. Could you imagine? So, does that does that count? So, like, let's say people, a bunch of yeah. people buy the pack. Does that count as two two games? Yeah. You sold two games, yeah. So I mean, I guess, yeah, because Sword and Shield are two, two, different, of them. two different ones. Two yeah. units. So, yeah. yeah. Now, that that's what I wanted to bring up. Could you imagine if 
Gears came out and was like, hey, there's one story in one game and one story in the other. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so, like, eaten alive. <laughs> so, imagine the new Gears 5. You would uh, you would play as one Kate. game one game as Kate. The other one is... And the other one is... Uh, JD. Or JD, yeah. If, if, could you imagine? People would eat them alive. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. Fire Emblem tried to do that. Um, they made three games. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fire With, Emblem Fates... Is it a, a conquest? Was, and it was Awakening, else. Birthright, and Conquest. No, no, no. So no. no, no. Awakening was separate. It was, oh, was Birthright, it? Conquest, and something else. It was a third one. But uh, Awakening is the one I played. That's how I know. Awakening is the one with the okay. different people. But it was Birthright, Conquest, and it was a purple one. <laughs> That's all I remember. It was purple. Oh, I know. But didn't Fire Emblem tried to do that on 3DS, and I don't think it worked out great for them. So because they haven't tried it again. But nifty idea. But that's wild. Straight up wow! Congrats to people playing that. That's insane. Good lord. Okay, let's move on um, to the ESA. ESA is the head of E3. They plan to shake it up this year, Alex. This is by GameSpot by Alessandro Barbso. Barbso. With hmm. Sony already announcing that they will skip E3 for the second year in a row, the ESA and its annual trade show E3 haven't had their best start to 2020. But in the wake of Sony withholding the PS5 from the show, the ESA is determined to convince press and attendees that this year will be different. In a new statement, the ESA details how it's listening to criticism from last year's show and teaming up with new partners to, quote, shake things up in 2020. Quote, you'll be happy to know that we're not producing E3 2020 in a vacuum. <laughs> the statement reads, For E3 2020, we're collaborating with industry insiders and the new creative partners, including the tastemakers at im8bit.com. All right. I guess I was supposed to say that with a straight face. To re the show and to, frankly, shake things up. Mm. The ESA also addresses the issue of data integri- integrity following last year's embarrassing leak of attendee information via its website. In order to protect registration information in 2020, the ESA states that it has overhauled its registration process to only require the minimum amount of information required from attendees while also securing captured data far more securely. Quote, earning back your trust is our top priority, <laughs> statement reads. The rest of the statement, which you can read in full on the ESA website, again mentions new attendee attractions and shows in vague terms, reiterating ideas around high-profile guests, stage experiences, ex- experiential zones, and more that will, quote, delight the senses, end quote. The statement notes that the more concrete details will be revealed in the near future. Microsoft will be attending E3 2020 despite Sony's absence. Well, Phil Spencer confirming that Xbox Series X will be the highlight of their show. Thank God. So, more E3 2020 stuff. This looks like them grasping and trying to get people to come back. Um, Because, again, this is a lot of vague things. Mm -hmm. Ooh, delight the senses. Am I going to Disneyland? What's going on with this? We have about five, six months to E3. (sighs) That's wild, right? Yeah. feels like we just went to the other one. But, hey, I'm excited for the next one. Um, But not much here. I just wanted to bring up they made a statement. I wanted to make – I thought it was fair that to bring up that – they're trying to make their data better since they had a huge bre- breach of everyone's privacy last year. So, yep. One to end on that note. Alex, mm. The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf movie will be a Vesemir origin story. This is over on Netflix. Netflix has shared new details about the night, uh, The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf, confirming Vesemir will be the movie's central protagonist. The streamer released a. I don't like the. the oh. I just I've never heard Netflix called a streamer before, but I guess that's what they are. Yeah, they're they're technically a streamer. I don't like that. I don't like that yeah. at all. <laughs> the streamer released an official synopsis on the listing page of a recently announced movie, revealing the upcoming anime will serve as an origin story for Vesemir, aka Geralt of Rivia's mentor and father figure. They should just say stream service. <laughs> the stream yeah, there you go. Yeah, the streaming service. I like that. Not the streamer. Uh, the description reads, quote, long before mentoring Geralt, Vesemir begins his own journey as a witcher after the mysterious Declan claims him through the law of surprise, end quote. A young Vesemir was previously teased in the final episode of the Netflix Witcher series as Geralt recoll- uh, recollected a voice saying, quote, I've been waiting for you, end quote. He then responds by calling out Vesemir's name. In this case, Vesemir's short line of dialogue was delivered by Divergent star Theo James. So it's not outside the realm of possibility that the actor also recorded lines for the character's appearance in Nightmare of the Wolf, though it is unconfirmed at this stage. Does this tickle your whiffle, Alex? I don't remember that scene. It's when he's freaking out because he's poisoned. Oh. And he just hears a bunch of stuff. Okay, and then when yeah. he wakes up, he says Vesemir. Yeah. I, okay. Got it. Because I was about to say, that's, I was about to say the, cause I'm thinking of the last scene is when he, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But I was like, 
Oh, okay, I get it. I remember. Mm. No, yeah, it, it was cool. Yeah. Um, I, I, this is expected. They're very much trying to capitalize on the Witcher's mm-hmm. um, popularity right now. So I guess they're trying to, because they realize they have to wait two years before the next season. They're like, oh, let's get something in here yeah. <laughs> to, to keep its popularity going. So we're getting a Vesemir t- uh, tale, which is fun. Um, you're more uh, akin to TV as, as as I am. Does this excite you at all? Oh, Are yeah. You, oh, I'm excited. And especially it's an anime. So, I mean, it looks cool. Uh, I, like, I want to see what animation. You'll be able to do what, more. That and I want to see what animation they use. Mm, like if it would point. be, if, if it'll be more of a Castlevania anime. I hope. Or would it be like uh, the Godzilla anime? Or, mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many different animes that they can use. Mm-hmm. Like, which one would they use? Like, um, God, which yeah. Kiki's Delivery Service. Oh, there's one specific <laughs> anime that I'm thinking of. Naruto. Dragon Ball Z. Mm-mm. Dragon Ball GT. Is it Dante's Inferno? Berserk. I think it's Dante's Inferno. My Hero I'm Academia. Think. No, I'm thinking of Dante's Inferno. Oh, I could see that. For some reason, I, I think of with that. The Witcher seeing as no, that Dante Inferno an- uh, animation. Mm-hmm. And it, it would look cool. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I could definitely see that. That would be cool. Very cool. Yeah. This excites me. I, I, I don't know people well. I, Theo James, I assume, is a good actor because mm-hmm. he has his own TV show. So I'm excited. Excited to see more. I want more Witcher stuff. Yeah. Uh, this is just a PSA. PlayStation Plus and Games with Gold are out. PlayStation Plus, you can get Bioshock, the collection, available from February 4th to March 3rd. The Sims 4, uh, available at the, uh, the same time. And Firewall, same time. So that's three pretty great games for PlayStation Plus. That's a great week. Mm-hmm. Go pick those up. Um, again, all you have to do is be subscribed to PlayStation Plus for the time frame of what you want to play those games. You can be extended. You can be just that month. That's completely up to you. Mm-hmm. Um, but great. That's a great. Hey, that's a great month. Games are cold. Not as impressive. <laughs> T- oh, there's one that it, that 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 tickles my fancy. TT Isles of Man. This is from February 1st to February 29th. Um, that's like a motorcycle game yeah it's a dirt yeah um call of cthulhu february 16th yep. to march 15th i yep. assume that's what that's tickled the one, your fancy yep fancy i've been tickled i've been interested uh i've been interested in this call of cthulhu game me too i want to try it out it's once it comes out because it's it out. this and then that one other one uh the sinking city oh yeah, yeah. same same vibe same, same vibe yeah fable heroes which is a 360 backwards compatible game february 1st february 15th mm-hmm. and then star wars battlefront one february 16th to february 29th that was already that is that's the xbox one i think it's on game pass Mm. so it's weird that it's coming on that's my thing i was like i guess we get it permanently whatever but yeah it's kind of a weak month for uh xbox but i'm Mm. excited to try call of cthulhu but Mm. playstation plus get bioshock get sims 4 get fire get all get all three hey if you have plus why not get it all get it all alex Mm. that's all of our news for the month for the month, Jesus. For the week. For the week, yeah. That was jam-packed. Yeah, well, that I was a lot. to bring back a segment. Okay. This is uh, what all... Uh, everyone uh, that listens to the show, what you know and love. That's right. It's... I saw some weird shit on Twitter. Oh, man. It's about racing pigeons. Racing pigeons. Exactly what I did. So there's... Racing pigeons are a thing. Um, and this was on Business Insider's Twitter essentially they trade them to race and come back to them and one of these fuckers sold for 1.2 million dollars to a dude in china what click on the link click on the link okay and then and then just like like literally they're the racing pigeons and then they 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 like fly around alex 1.2 million dollars for one look how many pigeons there are give me a second Alex has an old computer and it hasn't loaded yet, but mine is already playing the video. Oh, I'm sorry. 1.4 million. I am a fool. <laughs> it's, it's it's loading the website. God, these pigeons look so confused. They're like, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I'm, for- I'm meant to be garbage. I'm meant to not do much. My God. They are some of the oldest domesticated birds. They've been kept for thousands of years, used for food, sending messages, and entertainment. What do you do for entertainment? Just send them How around? do you know which one's yours? That's, I assume they're tagged, right? There are over 800 breeds of pigeons, many bred specifically to be exhibited at shows. They have different versions of pigeons? Oh, there's so many pigeons. I thought pigeon, pigeon was just a version of a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you're technically right, because no, pigeon well, I mean, like, a like, subsect I, of like, birds. Like, uh, like, God, I'm going to sound dumb. Uh, okay, like, for example, a toucan. Mm-hmm. A toucan, you would think, is just there's just one type of toucan. Mm-hmm. But is there multiple toucans? Yeah, I think there's multiple toucans. I, 
Okay. I, I, I think it's one of those things where, like, it's a toucan in a loose sense where, like, they have colorful Whoa, ones. there's so many different there's ones. A lot of, there's a lot of going on. They're just talking about the history that of pigeons. That one looks, like, royally. Again, if you want to, they do act like they're, they're snug. Like, yeah, right? They like, do act like they're better than me, mm. and I don't like that. They act yeah. like they're better than me and have more money, and I don't yep. respect that. I will shoot them if they ever come near me. <laughs> um, apparently, they were a big part in the world wars because they would send them out as messengers and tell them to do stuff, I guess. Okay, I don't, I don't like them because they they, they poop in my. Car. They're pretty gross, um, and they're very dirty if you don't clean them. Like they mm. have illnesses all over them. I wouldn't I wouldn't touch them. Oh, those two are fighting. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna win. No, I'm not gonna win. Uh, I'm not gonna win. Yeah. All right. That's God, that's the end. That's the end of my segment. I saw some weird shit on Twitter and wanted to show Alex. All right. So this is gonna be my thing. Let's let, let, let let's talk, let's 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 go to this show you were referencing earlier. This uh, show, show was that? This show was called Dracula. Dracula. Now, what did I just do? I just okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the the link that you sent me, it like it like zoomed in the the font. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, how did you think of it? Because I've watched I've watched it, and I told you how I felt about it. Give me your thoughts. I'm going to keep it surface base, and if you want to hear more, you can head over to patreon.com slash easyachievers. Whew. Episode one, I was feeling it, man. Dude, right? It was great. This you're is like, awesome. I'm terrified. I don't know what I'm going to see next. not going to lie. The first, like, 10 minutes, you're like, who the hell is this old man? And I'm like, this is weird. So I kind of assumed it was... No, I... I mean, well, I mean, I assumed it, but you're... But then I'm like... It's things, weird. It's thing, It's weird. Yeah. And then I thought he had sex with him. That, that, that's, <laughs> that's what I thought too. I'm I like, he is he doing Dracula? And I was, I was like, hey man. I and see, I don't know if he is or he is just imitating that no, he is. No, he's he's, he's he's not he's, banging he, them. He's no, making he, their dreams. Yeah. So they don't notice they're getting eaten. Yeah. Episode one, great time. Yeah. Episode two. Mm-hmm. Great time. Again, yeah. I'm suspense the whole time. Yeah. I didn't see the twist coming in, in cabin number nine. We're going to keep this all separate. Based. We're not going to spoil yeah. anything. Again, we're going to talk about this on our Patreon exclusive, so go give us the buck if you want to listen to our full thoughts. Love that twist. Love all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Ending awesome. Yeah. Episode ends. Yeah. It happens, yeah. and I go... And it, of it's, course. It's funny, too, because you're like, all right, two's done. Yeah, I got to go to three, because I, I got to see what happens. <laughs> So as soon as that happened, I was like, "This is not gonna be good." And see, the first like five minutes, like when they when when you know when he pops up and he's like, "Hello," and he and uh, you can see what's happening. You're like, "Oh, this is where they're taking it." And then throughout mm. the episode, you're like, "What's going on? What just happened?" Episode I, three of Dracula I, is possibly the biggest jump in how much I love this series from top to bottom mm-hmm. as quick. And as efficiently as possible, whereas I almost stopped watching it. Mm-hmm. We're also going to go over a few more shows. And again, that will be over on patreon.com slash EGTVers. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you want to hear the rest of our thoughts, head over to patreon.com slash EGTVers. Give us the dollar. That helps us out a lot. That keeps the mics on. That keeps the lights on. That keeps the puppies fed. If you want to support us more, there are different tiers. You can get your name read on the show. You can get a personal thank you. If you want to talk to us or scream about us about our dumb opinions, you can head over on Twitter at EVM9000 at Cravy Sip Skater. Thank you guys so much for listening for this week. We'll see you next time. We're going to go play some Apex. Yes, we are.